Welcome to Seven Skills for the Future podcast. My name is Emma Sue Prince, and this podcast is based on the internationally selling book by the same name. This book focuses on seven important skills. They are adaptability, critical thinking, empathy, integrity, being proactive, being optimistic, and being resilient. And this podcast is all about how you can bring these skills into your everyday life so that you are living a life full of happiness, full of purpose, great relationships, doing work that you love, and just really getting the most out of life. Welcome back to Seven Skills for the Future podcast. My name is Emma Sue Prince, and I'm joined by my producer, James. Hi, Emma Sue, and hello, everyone. So in today's episode, Emma Sue, we have an interview. Who are you speaking to today? I am speaking to Warren Berger. And Warren is uh, a best-selling author, and he writes for uh, Harvard Business Review, Fast Company, Psychology Today, Wall Street Journal. And he's also a self-described questionologist. Um, Mm. So, yeah, (laughs) I hadn't come across that before either. But I think uh, think we're extremely lucky to uh, have him on the show. Um, He talks about the importance of asking great questions and does this with lots of different kinds of audiences. So he works with uh, huge groups, um, but also uh, executive retreats and and, and top level leaders. And he's spoken to all sorts of people in his talks from from retailers to software engineers, bankers, teachers, um, government, luxury brand people, top CEOs. Um, And here he is on our podcast and his books are referenced in my chapter on critical thinking. Great. So what can our listeners expect from this interview? Well, you know, for me, as always, um, to interview someone whom I've referenced in my book is a great honour. And uh, I think I've said before, it's a bit like going to a really cool lecture. Um, And so Warren and I talk about how tapping into the power of questions really shapes innovation and creativity and also contributes to really strong understanding and great relationships. So we talk about um, what makes a beautiful question. And uh, Warren's latest mission is to transform classrooms into cultures of curiosity and inquiry. Mm. And I think um, I think Warren's a great example of someone who's completely focused on the art of asking questions. You know, that's that's all he does. And it's uh, it's such a simple thing, yet so powerful. Um, and that's what we talk about. So I think the interview will give listeners a lot of food for food for thought and um, some practical tips and ideas to try out as well. Great. Okay. Shall we listen to it? Yeah. Let's listen to the interview. So I'm delighted to be welcoming Warren Berger to the podcast all the way from New York. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Well, I think I want to ask you, first of all, why questions are important. Why should we care about asking questions? Well, they're they're super important for um, so many reasons. They they affect so many parts of our lives and we don't even realize it. Um, You know, I initially got interested in the aspect of questioning that relates to innovation and and creation. Uh, You know, I found that a lot of Innovators, creators, artists are uh, are often working with or working on a big question, and mm. usually it's that question that leads them to some kind of a breakthrough. You know, if someone will be saying, "Why hasn't someone come up with a better way to do this thing or that thing?" and then they pursue that question, and it eventually leads them to, you know, some type of a very successful outcome. So I was interested mm. in, initially. In, the, in that aspect, we'll call it the innovation aspect mm-hmm. of, of questioning. But then as I got deeper into the subject, I realized it's, it's important, you know, in so many ways. Um, well, there's the obvious way we all know that it's a way you get information out of, say, other people. But beyond that, it's a great way to build a rapport with people when you're conversing or just having a relationship with someone 
asking questions is a really great way to build trust and, and interest. And it's just really effective. Um, it's also really effective um, as a leadership tool, which kind of surprised me. I, I didn't think of initially of thinking of asking questions as something that a leader does. But the more I researched it and looked into it, the more I realized that, you know, leaders who ask great questions can really uh, engage people and rally them around uh, a big cause or a big, a big goal. So, mm-hmm. um, so there are all kinds of really great things that, that questioning does. And I think we tend not to appreciate how powerful a tool it is. You know, we, we tend to think of it as just simply a form of conversation and, it, you know, uh, doesn't really matter that much. But in fact, it's really, really important in a lot mm-hmm. of different areas of your life. Mm. I mean, it just makes me think that to ask really good questions, we also have to be really good listeners, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Although I divide questions into two types. Um, Mm -hmm. One type is really more the questions you ask yourself. So, Mm. so that doesn't involve listening so much. Um, But then the other, the other category of questioning is questions you ask other people. And, um, and I think that that's where listening becomes really important because the questions that you ask other people oftentimes will be um, informed by what you're hearing them say or what you're noticing, what you're observing. So, so listening and paying attention will help you to ask uh, better questions. Mm, paying attention. That's something I think we are not necessarily that great at. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. It, it's very difficult to pay attention. And, um, and I think one of the things I talk about a lot with questioning is that it's um, a big part of questioning is like slowing down, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, because in order to ask good questions, including the ones you ask yourself, like if you're asking yourself a question, you know, am I really on the the path I want to be on? Am I, am I accomplishing what I want to accomplish at this point in my life? Let's say if you're asking a question like that, in order to do that, you need to sort of slow down. And you need to make the time and the, uh, and the effort to, to consider questions like that. And, and similarly, mm-hmm. if you're in terms of questioning other people, you, you almost need to slow down a little bit and, and listen to what people are saying and p- observe and pay attention. So, yeah, it's, it's not easy. I think we can all get better at paying attention if we, um, if we work at it. You know, I, I talk a lot about – trying to practice a uh, beginner's mind uh, in mm-hmm. your life and in your work, you know, which is simply, you know, trying to look at things as if you haven't seen them before, trying to take a fresh perspective on things. That's really, really important because that will help you to uh, notice things more and it will help you to ask better questions. You know, you when, when you can take mm-hmm. a beginner's mind approach you begin to ask questions almost the way a child does or the way a newcomer, a person who's new to uh, an area, let's say, those people sometimes ask really great fundamental questions that the rest of us don't ask because we're too familiar with what's going on around us. So we don't ask those kind of basic um, uh, curious questions that maybe we should be asking. Mm. How do we get to that beginner's mind? I mean, our, our minds seem to be constantly crammed with distractions and information and, and, and assumptions as well, right, about, about things. So beginner's mind is, is, is kind of having a blank sheet of paper. Yeah, it is. How do you, how do you get to that? Um, I just think it's a matter of asking yourself to do it <laughs> or telling yourself to do it. Um, you know, I, I prefer asking because I'm, I'm the question guy. So I think, you know, all of these, any behavior change to me starts with um, asking yourself, you know, how might I, how might I get myself to do that? So if you want to um, slow down and pay attention more, you, you, you start by asking yourself, you know, how could I do that in one small way? Maybe on the way to work today, I will, um, I will try to look around more. Maybe when I'm having a conversation, I'll try to hold back 
um, what I'm going to say and listen a little more. It starts with that conscious awareness that you're going to try to do something. There's no secrets really on how to do it, on how to do any of these things. I mean, people have little tips sometimes on listening or observing, but I don't really think there are any uh, magical techniques or secrets that suddenly will make you a better listener or a better observer. I really think it's about effort and it's about Mm. recognizing that it's important to do it and saying, I'm going to try. Now, when you, when you do those things, there's a commitment you have to make. And usually the commitment involves time. You know, that's why I always talk. It's really important. This point about slowing down, you know, there's a, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the work of the psychologist, Daniel Kahneman, but he wrote the uh, the great book, um, thinking fast and slow. So, and talked about the fact that oftentimes we're in kind of a reaction mode, um, a gut instinct mode. We're, we're, we're thinking very fast. We're doing things very fast. Um, there's a whole other kind of thinking that is slow thinking that is more reflective. It's using, it's making um, more thoughtful decisions. And to me, it's questioning. Questioning is a form of, of slow thinking. When you slow down and mm-hmm. say, okay, what's really going on here? What should I be thinking about? what's important and what's not important. When you ask those kinds of questions, you're slowing down. Uh, You're not just Mm -hmm. going with gut instinct. You're not just going with the flow. You're challenging what's happening. You're, you're, you're thinking about more deeply about what's happening. So that's a time commitment. And I think all of these things, whether we talk about questioning, whether we talk about listening, whether we talk about beginner's mind, all of it involves a commitment to slow down, try to do these things, and uh, and then see what happens. Mm. I, I really like what you say about it being a conscious choice as well, because you know you 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 make that effort. You decide that you're going to okay today. I'm going to actually when I have this interaction with this person, I'm going to slow down and I'm going to listen. And I imagine that when you consciously do these things, you also notice a fairly immediate impact. Would that be right when you when you do that? I think you do. Um, you know, maybe not always. That's why you have to sort of, you may have to do it a couple of times. You know, the first time yeah. you try a sort of new behavior, you, you may only notice a small change or, uh, you know, so I think you have to you have to say I'm. You have to commit to it and say I'm. I'm going to try to behave this way uh, over a period of time, and I'll start yeah. with one. You know, one episode of doing it, but I'm going to try to continue to do it. And I think when you continue to make an effort to do a certain behavior, that's how you form habits. So what yeah. initially starts out being a real an, an effort, you know, an effort to pay attention and effort to ask more questions eventually will become easier and easier because it will start to be become your natural behavior. But that may not happen for a while. You know, you may have to really make the effort for a while and, uh, and, you know, and pay attention to what's happening when you do it. I think sometimes you will see mm-hmm. results quickly. Sometimes you'll see small, subtle, subtle changes mm-hmm. or subtle results, but, um, mm-hmm. But that's all part of the slowing down is also reflecting, reflecting on, you know, well, I just tried this behavior. How did it feel? Um, What did I what seemed different? What did I learn from it? Mm. All of those kinds Mm. of reflection. That's another form of questioning. Right. And um, and it's uh, that will help you to appreciate what's going on. And that all helps to solidify the behavior. And of course, when you're when you're asking these questions and changing these behaviors, you you you're becoming much more self aware as well, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, all of this is about self awareness. Um, a lot of questioning is, you know, in my book, uh, uh, the book of beautiful questions, I have a whole section on decision making, and you know, a lot of what we do in our lives, and this gets back to the fast and slow thinking again. Is, is based on, you know, assumptions or a lack of awareness of, of ourselves or the world around us. We're just kind of going on, on automatic mm-hmm. pilot. And so 
what you're trying to do with questioning a lot of times, you know, when you ask yourself certain questions, is this the right decision to be making? What else should I be thinking about? What other options do I have that I might not be considering? When you ask those kinds of questions, what you're trying to do is is just open up your thinking a little bit because you probably are starting out with a lot of biases and, and, and a certain habits, certain assumptions, um, certain ways of doing things. And what you want to do is open up your thinking a little bit. And that's what questioning does in general. It, it, it can really open up your the way you think about an issue. It can open up conversations you have with other people. It's a great um, opener, if you will. It's like an opening mm. tool. Mm-hmm. And so your book is called The Book of Beautiful Questions. So I, I want to ask you, what, what makes a question beautiful? Yeah, well, that's a very subjective uh, uh, term, you know. Um, so yeah. <laughs> people, I'm sure people would have all different ways of describing a beautiful question. So I had to come up with my own kind of definition of, of what I meant. I knew I wanted to use the term beautiful questions because I thought um, some questions are really powerful and they really seem to achieve amazing things. And I thought I wanted to refer to those as beautiful questions. Um, I originally got the idea from a line from the poet E.E. E. Cummings, who wrote, uh, who had a line that was um, always the beautiful answer who asks a more beautiful question. So I really like that phrase, a more beautiful question, and it, it became the title of my first book. But then once I knew I wanted to use that as my title and as my kind of, you know, main uh, uh, anchor of my book, I had to really define, well, what do I mean by a beautiful question? So I don't, I, I tend not to include, let's say, philosophical questions or spiritual, spiritual questions, which can, of course, be beautiful questions, right? Mm. So those are, uh, they're, they're another type of beautiful question. Um, what I defined a beautiful question as a, a question that is very ambitious and that has the potential to bring about change. So that, you know, when I looked at all these stories of people changing their lives or innovating or creating something new, you know, they were often asking a question that was ambitious, like, you know, uh, why hasn't someone come up with a, a better way for us to, you know, get from point A to point B or a better way to communicate with each other? People were asking really big, ambitious questions, um, but they were also questions that were actionable. They weren't so they weren't so ambitious that you could not do anything about it. Like they weren't asking, you know, how can I make everyone in the world happy right now? You know, they weren't asking questions like that. They they were asking questions that that they could actually do something about. And to me, that was. That was what I determined was a beautiful question. One that was really ambitious, had the potential to bring about change, but was also actionable. You could also, mm -hmm. you could also actually try to do something about answering that question. And I still hold on to that as my, my um, definition for a beautiful question. Mm -hmm. But other people may have other definitions. You know, they may <laughs> have definitions that have to do with a question that um, – that sort of um, explores a, uh, a, a, a a new way of thinking, or or, or some or a mm -hmm. question that that um, you know brings you to a different place spiritually. You know that could be mm -hmm. a beautiful question too. I like it. I like I like the idea of a beautiful question, yeah. and I like the idea that we probably can at any time uh, ask those kinds of questions. You know, what if this were different, or what if this could be done differently, or changed in some way i mean you could almost go about your day asking those questions yeah you could and now one thing I, one point i want to make though is that you know the really great stuff happens when we don't just ask these questions and then move on um mm -hmm. the important stuff happens when we ask those questions and then stay with them we take ownership of them mm -hmm. so if you look mm -hmm. at a lot of the stories that are in my books about about change that came about, 
you find that it started with a question, but then the person or the people who were asking that question, they really stayed with it. I mean, they worked on that question. And sometimes the question would change over time. Sometimes it would evolve, but they stayed with it. You know, they, and, mm -hmm. and then, you know, maybe two or three years later, they had some kind of an answer to it. They had, and that was a big breakthrough for them. So mm -hmm. that's the thing I try to, a point I try to make to people is it's, it's not only about asking questions, it's about when you when you find a really great question that intrigues you and you think has potential to to bring about change, stay with it, uh, work on it, share it with other people, uh, make it your beautiful question, make it your question that you're gonna you're gonna pursue, and that's when you'll get to something because a lot of these big ambitious questions you're not gonna have the answer right away. Um, that's why they're ambitious questions. I mean, they're, you know, yeah. uh, you, you can't look it up on Google. You know, the kinds of questions I'm talking about, they really involve, uh, they require a much deeper kind of search. And so mm -hmm. you, you have to be willing to stay with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's also the same when you're asking yourself questions because you've got to try and stay with it and, and actually be willing to answer the question that you yeah be willing to yeah, work on it yourself. you know like because, yeah, because the thing is you yeah. probably won't have an answer and that's why a lot of people shy away from those questions they they feel like mm -hmm. well if i ask myself a really difficult question about you know having to do with what i'm doing with my life or some where i'm at right now in, in my career if i ask those kinds of questions and i don't have an answer then mm -hmm. i'm gonna i'm gonna be really frustrated so what I say to people about that is just the point of asking these big questions is not to ha come up with an answer on the spot. It's to get your mind thinking about it. It's, it's, to, get, it's to sort of get some momentum behind mm -hmm. that question so that you can explore, explore it, uh, pursue it. As I say, share it. Be, you know, really important to share questions with people. If you're working mm -hmm. on a challenge, if you're working on a problem, let people know. You say, you know, say, hey, you know, I'm, you know, I'm pursuing this question of how how might I find a way to do this or do a better job at that. Share it, um, put it on the wall to remind yourself about it. And I think what you'll find is you will make progress. On that question, mm. it will it will happen almost automatically. Um, you know that we often hear about you know getting ideas in the shower <laughs> or waking up <laughs> waking up with an insight. Well, if you if you're working on a beautiful question, that's going to happen. You're going to get insights. Uh -huh. You're going to and they won't necessarily come right away when you first ask the question. They might come two days later. They might come three weeks later. You know, I've, I've yeah. had stories where. Uh, you know, the uh, with Steve Wozniak, the, the co-founder of Apple, told me that he he had a question he was wrestling with, and the answer came to him 20 years later, uh, <laughs> just out of the blue. <laughs> so it's a funny thing, you know, um, with with these questions. When you put a question into your mind, your mind will go to work on it, and you might not even realize it. Your your subconscious is going to be working on answering that question. So, yes. but you have to ask it first. If you don't yeah. ask it, if you don't ask your mind that question, um, then your mind's not going to work on it. So mm. that's why it's so mm. important. And and do you think that writing it down helps that process? Yeah, oh, definitely. I think um, yeah. any way to solidify the question um, mm -hmm. is is good because number one, it it keeps it in your in your it keeps it in your sight. You know. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing good about writing down questions is it forces you to work on them a little bit. So mm -hmm. you might be able to, you might find that as you write down the question, you make it more precise or you make it more specific. Um, you might change the wording and realize, oh no, I don't want to say it this way. I want to, I want to mm -hmm. open up the question and expand it so that it's even more ambitious. Or you might say, no, I want to, I want to bring it down a little bit and, and so that it's more focused and it's not overly mm -hmm. ambitious. So, so I think writing down the question will help you to work on it and improve it and get it into a, a, a final form. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And by the way, when I just want to share with people, yeah. when you're working on a big question, um, great phrase to use is how might I, or if you're working with, uh-huh. if you're working with a group of people, how might we, it's just a very powerful way to begin a question that involves solving a problem. So mm-hmm. don't say, what should we do about this? Or what are, how are we ever going to deal with this problem? It's like, how might I, or how might yeah. we find a way to do a better job at X? Um, yeah, kind of, yeah. it opens things up, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it opens yeah. things up. And, and it's, it, it's, the word might is very important because it allows for different possibilities. It doesn't suggest there's only one way to do it. When you say might, you might do this, you might do that. So it opens up lots of um, creative possibilities. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I want to come back to something you said earlier on about um, conversation openers. So I did read when I was um, look, looking at some of your, your work, I read that you had said or you had, you had quoted um, that a, a quiet person's superpower is, uh, is questions. Yeah. So I'd love to know a bit more about that and, and how, you know, I, I'm a natural introvert. So the idea of going out and asking questions is, is you know, it's out of my comfort zone. I do it, of course, because we introverts are good like that. But how, how can we really harness that as a superpower? Well, I think, um, you know, first of all, appreciate it. It's, it's, it's a, as an introvert, you probably have some of the tools to be a better questioner. Um, all, you already have them. Because introverts tend to be uh, a little bit better listeners. They tend to be a little more uh, thoughtful when they speak. Um, And so those are all things that help you uh, be a better questioner. So you already have um, some stuff working for you. Uh, Now, now the reason questioning is such a great tool for an introvert, too, is is um, it takes some of the pressure off you to be in the spotlight uh, telling a long, elaborate story, you know, um, which can be difficult, right? Uh, what yeah. you do when you ask questions is you shift that responsibility over to the other person and you allow that person to do more storytelling. And um, a lot of people really like that when you do that, when you give them that opportunity, especially if they're not introverts, right? Right. So they, mm-hmm. it gives them a chance to shine and to share something with you. And so your role then can be, you know, I am going to uh, do the best job I can of pulling this story out of this person. And that means I will not only ask the initial question about, um, you know, an initial question might be, you know, what are you really excited about these days or what are you passionate about, passionate about these days? And then someone will say, oh, you know, I'm really, I really like doing such and such. I've really gotten into it. And then you can ask follow-up questions of like, you know, what is it you really like about that? Or how did you first mm-hmm. get started on that? What, what, what first drew you to that? So you can use questioning to really draw out that person. And, um, and it's, really, it's really effective. Now, I also recommend, you know, every now and then you should share your own perspective on it too with them so that it doesn't seem like you have no opinions or or you have no life or you have no, you know, you want to, you want to join in as well and say, you know, my own experience with that is such and such. But the questioning is a great way to, for you to um, just sort of get into a conversation without having to um, do some of the difficult stuff of of telling jokes or telling stories or, or, or that kind of thing. Those are really good tips because I've got a networking event coming up, so <laughs> which I which I kind of naturally like to avoid. Yeah, but, so uh, so go into yeah. it almost as if think of yourself as a uh, detective, uh, and yeah. and your job is to bring out is to uncover the interesting things that people have to say or that are going on in their lives that they really would like to share, and and your your job is to help them share it. That's great. That's great. So, um, Warren, what, what kind of things are you working on at the moment? Well, what I'm doing right now is I'm taking my work, uh, particularly my first book, A More Beautiful Question, and I am adapting it for schools. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, this, this will be uh, 
primarily schools in the U.S., but it's a it's a it's a publishing company that has international um, um, editions. So I, I hope it's going to get out to schools in in Europe and around the world. Um, and it's basically you know taking this idea that questioning is so important and trying to share it with teachers and mm-hmm. educators and school administrators so that they will try to find ways to bring more questioning into the classroom. And when I say that, I don't necessarily mean questions asked by the teacher because teachers mm-hmm. already ask a lot of questions. So we don't really need to increase the number of questions that teachers ask. We need to increase the number of questions that students ask. Um, right mm-hmm. now, you know, the traditional education system is more about students answering questions and um, memorizing answers and then giving those answers on a test. So what I believe and what a lot of people in education believe too, is that there's something really important that happens when students ask questions, when they raise their hand and ask a question. Um, It gets them more engaged. It gets them more interested in in the learning so, so the challenge is, you know, how do we do that? How do we, mm-hmm. how do we create classrooms where students are more likely to be curious and to ask questions as opposed to just sitting there passively? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. That sounds great. And um, if our listeners want to find out more about your work, how can they find you? Yeah, the, I have two websites. Um, the main website with all of my questioning stuff and it's a it's a great site um you can go on it and spend a lot of time if you like because it's full of articles and fun stuff and uh all to do with the subject of questioning and it's called the site is called a more beautiful question uh same as my first book so it's just a more beautiful question.com all one word a more mm-hmm. beautiful question one word dot com and that's the main site, and, and I think I advise people go there, and you'll you'll you can learn all kinds of stuff, get all tips and uh, fun stuff as well. Um, then there's also a site called WarrenBurger.com, and that's more um, for people who may be interested in um, what I do in terms of giving speeches or going around and doing presentations. Um, so you can learn about what I do uh, as a speaker. But uh, but those are the two ways to to get at me, and on Twitter. I am, uh, my Twitter handle is GlimmerGuy, at GlimmerGuy. Great. So all those um, links will be in the show notes for you. And I just want to thank you so much, Warren, for coming onto the show today. It's been great having you with us. Well, it was a wonderful conversation and you asked great questions. Oh, thank you. Well, you've given me lots to think about as well. So uh, I hope uh, all our listeners have got uh, food for thought and really some um, great inspiration for thinking about the questions that they might ask of others and of themselves. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the seven skills for the future podcast there are all sorts of things you can do to boost each of the seven skills if you want more ideas you can buy the book seven skills for the future you can also go online to our website unimenta and join as a member and you'll be able to access more resources ideas and free downloads if you have a question you want to ask on these podcasts get in touch through instagram at seven skills for the future or on Twitter and Facebook at Unimenta. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your podcast player of choice.